Hello Mappers. Um, today I'm, I want to show how to add information to OpenStreetMap about jeepneys. And um, here on the left side of my screen, I opened an application called QGIS. And um, it allows you to edit, open, view, review, manipulate data. Um, in the field of uh, GIS. Um, I don't usually use this program for OpenStreetMap. It's, uh, it, it offers many functionality what you don't need for OpenStreetMap. So um, I haven't configured this properly yet. Um, but you can add here to the XYZ tiles, you can add OpenStreetMap itself or the public transportation. And the, the trick is I use this only as background because like I said I don't actually use it to edit OpenStreetMap. And to use OpenStreetMap you just add the tile server. This is the XYZ or the TMS tile server. And um, here you have the public transportation. Um, that's the tile server for, um, uh, yeah, in Germany we call it Öffentliche uh, Personennahverkehr, but um, in English it's public transportation, but it's hosted in Germany by a German company. Um, these are the existing Jeep lines. Now how did I get this information? I actually went to a terminal, a terminal personally, got into a jeep, started riding, and um, on the phone I switch on the tracking and then I know where the jeep goes to the right, to the left, the tracking works very well and that's and also how I know where is the turning point, uh, where is the terminal station, what areas does he actually surface and um, the thing is Jeep drivers sometimes deviate from the route, so this is the official route, but then also there's the um, Jeep driver interpretation of the route, and uh, also officially they, as I was explained quite recently, Jeep drivers, they have the um, ability to choose of alternatives on the official routes. Um, and then you have the concept that sometimes people make requests to Jeep drivers, um, which they not always honor, but they try as good as they can. If they know I cannot turn somewhere as a driver, my, my Jeep gets stuck or it's very complicated to drive, they won't go there. Um, but if they can accommodate, usually they do. I'm not sure if that's uh, legally allowed, but... Um, well, in OpenStreetMap we map the reality on the ground, so if in reality they do try to accommodate, um, and then I see that, then I map that. Um, yeah, because that's that's reality on the ground. Um, this here is not always up to date. This is, as I told you, hosted by a German provider and um, they update the data, I do not know exactly when, once a month, once every two months, I have no idea when they do that, but not quite often. Um, you can see that for example here, this is CM Rector Road in the old version of OpenStreetMap. I fixed this actually a few few days, no actually about two weeks ago I fixed that because actually this is Navy Base Road and it goes all the way down here to the to the main road and um, wait we can open that here on OpenStreetMap and then you can actually see that Here you can see that actually this is now called Navy Base Road. Um, then there's another example. Uh, this one was also wrongly named. 
Let's see if he got that. Now it's still Telecom Road, but the signs on the road signs, it actually is written very clearly, Polo Field Road. And then there's another one here. This is um, Amroxas Street. When you go to the old version, it says Lower Brookside Street. So this gives you an indication that this information here is already outdated by one or two months, maybe even older. Like I said, I have actually no idea. I just noticed that they're outdated. I do know they update at least a few times a year. Um, yeah, but you gotta you gotta always keep that in mind when you look at stuff. The actual database information on OpenStreetMap might be different as what you see here. Um, this is a renderer, and like all rendering engines, platforms, on your phone, on your uh, navigation equipment, on your uh, dedicated GPS equipment, or on a website, what they show to you as customer, or even if you're a mapper yourself, you should always keep in mind, that is a renderer. They render tiles. Tiles have to be rendered as well. There is CPU performance involved there, which reads the database, which also reads the changes in the database. And they generate um, PNG or GPG. Um, yeah, they, they render the tiles. That's what we call it. It's basically just a picture, a tile and sometimes the dimension is 256 by 256, sometimes it's a bit bigger, sometimes a bit smaller. Um, and this takes time, it's very CPU intensive, it consumes a lot of power, so they, um, they render with the resources that are available. Um, it's quite expensive to maintain the uh, infrastructure to do this, to maintain the computers that do this, uh, the hosting costs a lot of money, so it's not always up to date, and this is what you see here, right here on the map, that um, the host which shows you these uh, public transportation roads, routes, obviously cannot render everything that you would see a change being reflected within one or two days. There are also some companies um, that offer applications on your phone. Uh, they have subscription models, free models. Uh, the free models work great for most people. Um, but you get a lot of uh, nice stuff if you uh, use a subscription model. And these companies update quite regularly, especially in the free mode. You get an update once a month. If you uh, are in the pay mode, you get live updates, which basically means if, if a mapper changes something on the database within, let's say, 15 minutes maximum, that's my experience, within 15 minutes it's reflected on my phone uh, with the live updates. So, well, you know, if, if they get a lot of customers that pay for it, they can afford the infrastructure to uh, provide you uh, these services. Uh, this is for free, this uh, open uh, public transportation on the uh, Öffentliche Personen Nahverkehr server. Um, that's hosted for free. It's uh, maintained by donations, so their financial capabilities are probably a bit limited, and they cannot do that. Um, why am I using this actually? Because we want to map a Jeep. Well, the thing is you can actually see what's already mapped. And um, you can see what's not being mapped. I switched off everything here on the left panel. All the layers are switching off except um, Dontagan Santa Thomas Balakba. I kept it still on. And that's here the area in the south. Here you can see I mapped here the line to Dontogan. So I've been there with the Jeep riding there to the turning point and then back. 
Um, this area here, that's Balakbak. I haven't been there. I didn't map that one yet. Um, it starts about here on the right side, a little bit east of the Zal monument. There's a little street. There's a staging area with a lot of jeeps, and that's where the Balakbak line starts. Um, you see that here in one line, as I was told, the concept is it, it, it should be one line. Right now there are still two separated lines, at least the last time I went there at the staging area, there's still two separated lines. Um, that's politics, so I'm not getting into that. Um, the reality on the ground is these are still two separated lines, they should be united, but they're not. Um, then I want to show you some area here which I know very well. Um, let's look at that. That's the San Carlos Heights line. Yeah. So the red one here, that's the actual San Carlos Heights line. There's actually two lines of that. Actually, there are three or even four. <laughs> So you have a uh, San Carlos Heights line, which has the staging area here. That's then the terminal. Then there's another terminal here. Then there's a terminal here. And then there's a terminal... Oh, where is that? Here's Diamond Road. Oh, then it's exactly here at this point. And these jeeps at the staging areas, they're also split. So there's supposed to be one line. They should merge, um, but there are still four different lines operated by four different uh, terminals still at the staging area. Uh, so this is the San Carlos Heights extension, this is uh, San Carlos Heights NPC, it's actually also written on the Jeep uh, St. Patrick NPC, and on this one it actually says San Carlos Heights. Um, they have the staging area next to each other, but the physical reality on the ground is these two, although they look like one line, they are still two different lines. And um, yeah, then you can see also here that the plan is they should drive here and come back, and they should drive here and come back. Uh, sometimes they drive a bit up the road and come back. The reality of these lines is that they do this on request. So if, if no one is requesting for the Jeep driver to go into this area, into Saraling Sika, they won't. So if, if you stand there waiting for a Jeep, expect no Jeep to come, they might come if someone requested that, but if no one requests it, you're standing there I don't know, during the day there's not much movement going on there, so you might be waiting there for an hour or so. Um, that's why I did not map this, actually. Um, the reason is, uh, people might then think, if they look on the map, oh, there's a jeep coming, but there is not. So that, that's one of the things, there is an uncertainty in these additional routes. Uh, that's why I only map here the main route until this point. This is the official terminal. So if, if you walk to here, if you're anywhere in this area and you walk to this point, you will guarantee get a jeep. Um, it's the same here. So the, the, the plan, the official route is going here over Jade, Ruby, Sapphire and then back. This is the official terminal. Um, when I rode the Jeep, the Jeep actually went here, then turned around here and went straight back. While waiting here sometimes, because sometimes I use this Jeep myself, I live here in this area, so this Jeep I use quite often. And the reality is sometimes the Jeep driver, they actually do this, and then they drive up this road, but then they come back over Pearl and another jeep driver goes up over Jade and they come back over Sapphire and another one, he drives here, then he goes to the right 
and he drops off someone here in Aquamarine and then he comes back and another Jeep driver he uses here this Onyx route to come back so that that's the same with the Jeep drivers they are flexible if um, if a customer if a passenger requests to be dropped off somewhere they usually honor that um, especially in this area it's very steep um, it has steep slopes going up so they drop you off where you want to be dropped off and then they return here to the official terminal so all these deviations it makes no sense to map that the fact is jeeps they go actually always to this point here so that's what i map to this point and all these additional routes which they may may not sometimes they do sometimes they don't i don't map that so you don't get into the um, as consumer as passenger you don't get into the false assumption if if you're somewhere in this area let's say you've been hiking here and uh, you come all the way from up here long long you've been hiking here you walk here and they say oh there's a jeep here let's wait here there's actually a bench here along the line but well, don't wait for it because you might be waiting there two or three hours whereas if you just walk down the road here and then you wait here you get a jeep within 10 50 minutes so don't wait here walk those few hundred meters and you're okay so when you map something you got to take into account the, the perspective of the passenger the consumer the person who is in need who who want to request a jeep who wants to use the service of the jeep and um, that that's the concept what we call in uh, open street map physical reality on the ground um, it's of no use to map something giving a hint that something is a regular frequent used uh, line or route or street and then it's not um, so in this case the, so this video is just a part of explanation when you get official data um, think of all the possible scenarios where that fits into reality on the ground um, official data may not be uh, or actually cannot provide the data to all deviations a jeep driver might take um, when you come from Europe or America that's that's sometimes quite hard to understand because um, everything is planned to the last meter and drivers are absolutely strictly prohibited to deviate from routes and that's an insurance issue these uh, companies that uh, provide these services they, they usually have insurance in uh, Europe and America and uh, if there's an accident um, the worst thing that can happen of course if, if passengers die but from the perspective from the economical perspective of the operating company the worst thing that can happen is when people don't die but they're also not healthy they're in the middle they get injuries for life they get disabilities they carry on for life because if that happens the liability claims they are huge they go into the dozens of millions they can bankrupt such a company in Europe and America so for this reason they have insurance and uh, the insurance companies they are very strict they say well this is an approved route they also review these routes actually insurance companies they assess the risk they assess the uh, probabilities and the cost that could come from possible accidents and um, for that reason a driver is never allowed to deviate from a route so you, you, you can tell a driver always uh, no I need to drop off it's just 100 meters drop me up there it's uh, high steps I'm a uh, person with disability I cannot walk up there please drop me off they won't and they are not allowed to and the reason is if anything would happen on those 100 meters 
and you get passengers that get a disability for life because of that accident, then the, the, the operating company will be sued and they have to pay millions or dozens of millions Again, any cost to a passenger, they have to pay for the rest of their lives for that. Uh, those are high costs. It's a bankrupt uh, reason. And um, if they are insured, that's covered. And insurance companies, they usually operate in the billions. So for them, that's manageable. Uh, that's why they do these assessments. But for a... Uh, for a public transportation company paying dozens of millions suddenly. It's a tricky one, eh? It's not like they can uh, can drop that out of the sky and, uh, you know, on the table they drop there dozens of millions, case closed. They cannot afford that. Um, and the insurance company, of course, they will say, they also want to save money, so they will say if the driver did not follow the approved route, yeah, but we didn't cover that one because if you would have asked us to insure that part of the route, we would have made a different assessment. We would have known there's additional risk. Maybe there are no additional risks, but that's how insurance companies then work. They start then to argue to save their bucks. So they will find any reason then to claim, well, that's simply not insured for many, many reasons. And that is the main reason why they don't do deviations. Now here in Southeast Asia things are done a bit different. Uh, here you have these deviations. So you have the official route and then you still have drivers who do their own thing, who try to accommodate people who are uh, helpful. And um, especially to persons with disabilities or people with little kids, if, if they want to deviate from the route, they do that, usually. And. Um, yeah, so these are all kinds of things. Uh, what I want to explain to, to everyone who sees this video, if, if you map jeep routes here in the Philippines or any other public transportation in, in Asia, um, Baguio is very representative to that. Um, you got to keep in mind all these nuances that the data you are being provided is not necessarily the physical reality on the ground. Uh, which is the main concept of OpenStreetMap. And um, when you do mapping for OpenStreetMap, you use the official data, but it has to be translated to the physical reality on the ground, while at the same time, physical reality on the ground, that is temporarily we also do not map that on OpenStreetMap. It has to be consistent. So any physical reality on the ground that is temporary, a car that's being parked somewhere, a bus that's being parked somewhere, we don't map that. And for the same reason, deviations by Jeep routes, we don't map that. For the same reason, alternative routes that are sometimes being used, we don't map that. We map the regular um, route and um, let's see, did I forgot anything? No, I think I got the main main points really right and I showed the examples um, yeah, to sum up keep in mind official data you gotta work with that you gotta keep in mind the physical reality on the ground and you got to keep in mind it should be consistent and not temporarily. Uh, those are the three main issues when you do mapping for OpenStreetMap. And, um, well then, let's get on here with this line. How do we map this line here? That's the Palakpang line. And, uh, let me switch this off, we don't need it anymore. Um, Balakbak. Uh, excuse me for my uh, pronunciation. I'm not Tagalog speaker, so if in Tagalog it's it's spoken a bit different, um, I'm sorry for that. But I guess most Filipinos also speak English, so they will understand if I say Balakbak. 
Um, yeah, I've stopped this video now. So this video is primarily about the nuances on uh, mapping and using official data. And um, now let's get on to the video where we actually do the mapping.